All right, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining this session today. Um, so what's interesting for, uh, for, for our session today is just that um, it's not really a presentation about cloud apps. Um, it's a presentation about uh, a customer of ours, a uh, customer named Redo Point. So that's why we are two people in front today. Uh, so I'm Francois Gaudreau, and I'll present you Francois Bousquet from the Radio Point. Um, so like Sébastien uh, told, it's a success story. So we won't go into uh, the technical details. Uh, we'll try to keep it at a high, high level. Um, so if you have questions, we can address that later on. So before going into the, the details, let, let me introduce you to, to Cloud Apps, what we're doing. Uh, so we specialize in uh, building, supporting, and uh, managing cloud, uh, cloud computing platforms. So either cloud stack, cloud platform, or we also have uh, customers running on AWS. And uh, we manage those uh, deployments on a 24-7 basis. So we, we manage the infrastructure, we manage the cloud stack services, uh, we manage the VMs up to the application level. Uh, we have also some, uh, some good expertise on ADCs, so uh, people familiar with Netscalers. Uh, we have almost 12 years of experience with those. Uh, actually, we, we started working with Netscaler even before they got bought by Citrix. Uh, we also have an expertise on uh, end user uh, experience management and application performance management as well. Um, we have customers in Canada. US and EME, uh, I cannot add the A. Uh, we don't have any customers in Asia yet, uh, <laughs> but we're, we're working on it. And also it's important to, to add that we, we did some, some cool uh, contribution to CloudStack. Um, we do contribute to the project. Um, I have some colleagues, uh, Syed basically, he did the Nascar SSL offload uh, integration. So we'll present that I think uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, we have Will Stevens that uh, basically work on Palo Alto firewalls integration. Uh, he, cannot, he cannot be there today, but uh, Syed will, will present uh, that later today. And we have uh, Pierre-Luc Dion, uh, who worked on cloud stack deployment automation with Chef. Um, and we'll present that uh, later today as well. And about myself, well, my contributions are more uh, bugs related, so I'm, I'm good finding bugs. Um, and I'm good, like I'm posting on mailing lists a lot, so you might you might see my name quite often. <laughs> um, so let me give you a little context uh, before ending off to to, to the other Francois uh, about this um, this talk or this project. So a year ago, uh, Radio Point came to us and they said we need pass basically. So we were like, sure, customer, uh, but. Um, why? Why you guys need pass? So we wanted to better understand their needs. So we went there with the workshops. Uh, basically, we look at their processes. We look at uh, how the devs were working, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end, we came back with a gap analysis report uh, with a bunch of requirements there that, you know, where radio points should look uh, to evolve towards pass. But the report were, was primarily saying, guys, well, you need infrastructure first. Uh, you have to focus on infrastructure. Uh, so we did a we did a small POC uh, with Cloud Stack there. Uh, nothing really fancy. We started with uh, you know one VM for uh, Cloud Stack, one VM for the secondary storage and FS server. Uh, we created a, uh, a data center within their existing VMware uh, stack, and we we dropped in two hypervisors and we we started from there. So today, what's what's interesting is. Um, we will have a customer experience, like a real customer experience about uh, the CloudStack deployment. How CloudStack basically um, changed uh, the way the, the business is doing development. Um, so I'll, I'll end it off to Francois, which uh, will describe his experience with the, the deployment. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so let me just talk quickly about a radial point. Uh, so we're uh, a development shop. We're more than 100 employees. Uh, we have a strong innovation culture inside the company. Uh, we do quarterly hackathons to try to develop new stuff, hack on, 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 on new technology. Uh, our, our existing product is mainly uh, a technical support platform. 
uh, that we resell through partners that are ISPs and retailers mostly. Uh, so we don't, we don't, we, we, we outsource the labor, we, we focus on the software itself, uh, and it's, 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 it's been deployed as, as a SaaS offering to, in the end, millions of subscribers. Uh, we also um, are re more recently looked into a um, new product. Uh, we're basically, um, it's not basically, it's not really basic to do, but we're, we're developing a, a search engine uh, for tech support. And also we have a SDK for, um, to help uh, enable tech support uh, channels on mobile apps. Uh, we're a very open source friendly company, so we use a lot of open source technologies, but uh, our core um, infrastructure is, 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 is mostly enterprise, uh, and by enterprise I mean it's, it's a strong VMware uh, platform that we use. Uh, it's a mixed environment, we're almost fully virtualized, uh, and we use a whole bunch of popular technologies. And we're also based in Montreal, like, like, like CloudOps. Uh, so our environment, uh, we have three data centers, uh, two in Canada, Montreal and Toronto. And we also have, also have our head office for, for, for development and QA environments. Um, the, the, the two production data centers, one is active, one is standby. They're, they're almost identical at 99%. Uh, it's, it's a few little details. We do not have presence in US anymore. Uh, the reason behind that is some of our customers don't allow us to put the data on, on US. So for this reason, uh, it kind of complicates our, our, um, our, our way to the cloud, let's say. So, but recently, we found a, a workaround around that. We used the Amazon Ireland data center, uh, data center to, to start a project to migrate our, our standby data center for our disaster recovery to, 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 to the public cloud. So we're aiming towards a hybrid model where we have both a private and, and public cloud. So as I said earlier, we use VMware for virtualization. It's been something we've been using for more than five years. It's been very stable for us. We're very happy about that, except for the license cost. Um, and we also use Cisco UCS, just to give you a context on, on, on what we're using. Uh, in terms of load, we're speaking about more than 500 VMs across, across three sites. So my role is, I'm the, I'm the manager of the, the, the NOC team. So the NOC team is not really a NOC team in the sense that it's more, it's more an infrastructure team because we manage both, um, uh, we manage all networks, servers, OS, Windows, Linux, virtualization, storage, load balancers, et cetera, et cetera. Everything infrastructure related, we manage it, which helps us troubleshoot things because you have access to everything. So first, uh, the problems. So a year ago, uh, we were in, uh, in conversation with CloudOps to get, to get more, uh, to try to improve our, our, uh, the, the way we, we, uh, we manage technology and develop. So we had a lot of problems. Uh, first, one of the problems is that there was a lot of manual stuff, even though we automated a lot of things in the past years, like uh, application builds, uh, everything was packaged into RPM. That, that, that was a, a, great, a great start. But we, also, well, we had a, a bunch of issues regarding the execution of, and, and the installation, the creation of environments. Uh, and by an environment, I mean a bunch of virtual machines with applications configured, all linked together, and, and with, with proper data. So, and one of the biggest issues we had was just for simple server creation. So you have a team of infrastructure that manage the virtual environment, and you have a bunch of development teams internally that are all our customers that every time they need machines, they, send, they open a ticket, and they go through this somewhat complex workflow in order to get their, their, their one or many virtual machines. So that, that, that workflow involves reviewing the machine, getting approval, the creation of those machines. At least the, the whole creation part of the machines was somewhat automated. But in the end, uh, it, 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 was, it was taking days sometimes, uh, depending on, on the requirements. So, uh, so this whole process was, 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 was long, it was costly. And as a consequence, it was impacting our velocity and it was increasing all, all the development risks because it was intruding delays all the time. So in terms of solutions, what we, were, what we looked for, first of all, automation. I, I just cannot say it too, uh, too much. Uh, and also, um, one of the key components to do automations is to, was, was for us to have an infrastructure as a service platform. And that, 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 that's where CloudUps uh, really made us a good recommendation by suggesting us to, to use CloudStack. Uh, so last spring, we did a, a, proof, a proof of concept with, with CloudStack in order to understand 
uh, what it meant for us in, in the context of our infrastructure. Uh, so we were skeptic at the beginning, to, 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 be, to be honest with you. Uh, we are guys that are used to manage VMware to have access to all those advanced features of VMware. That's somewhat a pretty good environment. It's very stable and it's very cool. And then we were just at the first look we had at CloudStack, which was oh, just a GUI on top of VMware for users. But as, as much as we were learning it, we, we, uh, we, we, we found some advantages. But other issues we were, were seeing with CloudStack at the beginning was about resource usage. Uh, how can we manage the resource that we can give to people? People would just create machines if, if, if they have access to. They would just cre keep creating machines without cleaning them up. And also, uh, we were concerned about uh, the fact that some, some, some advanced features of VMware, like uh, uh, at that time, DRS, storage DRS, uh, were not like supported or, or completely supported. So we were, we were used to using those features in order to, to, to be able to do some, some, uh, some cool stuff. And we were asking questions about that. And at one point, we also tried to consider vCloud. Is this vCloud a good, a good alternative for us? Uh, on that one, it was pretty quick to realize that in terms of cost and complexity, it just wasn't worth it for what we were trying to do with it. So we kind of put that aside quickly. So we did the POC. It went pretty well. I mean, we were able to quickly get, get, get something up and running and start experimenting with it. And in the end, uh, we, we inst installed the cloud stack for all our development environments in, in during the summer. And two months later, we saw our first cloud stack um, uh, usage in production. So, um, so we started with version 4.0 and tried to upgrade as, as fast as we could to the new versions. Uh, we're, we're now we're, presently we're running 4.2.1. We haven't uh, touched 4.3 yet, but still recent. Uh, so in terms of notes, specifically to our traditional VMware cluster environment, uh, shared storage uh, and, and all this thing, um, so one of the first things we noticed with, uh, with CloudStack is that it, it requires vCenter. So we were hoping to have some licensing uh, um, savings there. But given that it happens that <laughs> it appears that we, we needed vCenter, so we had to keep our vCenter. But that's one thing to consider. Uh, the other thing we realized was the, the different types of licenses. Also, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the VMware types of licenses. So in addition to, to, to charging you for <laughs> For, for the different, different licenses. They also give you different offerings of, of those. So uh, they have basically standard enterprise and enterprise plus. Uh, mainly we were using enterprise plus licenses in order to benefit from like uh, distributed uh, vSwitch, uh, DRS, storage DRS, and such kind of feature. And enterprise, uh, and the standard licenses basically to make, 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 make this quick, uh, is a license that just gives you access to the hypervisor, the HA, and you don't have DRS, you don't have storage DRS, you don't have a virtual distributed switch. So but what we realized is that by, by using CloudStack, we didn't really need all the, the, those features because CloudStack was somewhat hiding them from us anyway. And, and because we were using CloudStack, we were entering some kind of a new model of development where, where, uh, where like more of a cloud type uh, model where generally you create machines, you destroy them, you can easily recreate them. So then this kind of feature, uh, was not as much important as it was as it was in the past. So, uh, one thing that that really makes our environment uh, different from typical cloud environment that are public is that our our environment is all is all private, in the sense that all these devs environments, so all the development teams that I deal with every every day, um, they do their stuff internally. They don't need to expose those on the web. So um, although those web applications mostly that they work on, they need to be, to be, to be uh, only accessible internally. And we, don't, we didn't want to go through complex like VP, internal VPN to access those. So stuff like um, isolated networks and public networks in terms of, of cloud stack terminology didn't make sense for us. For us, we just wanted to, people to deploy machines and be able to SSH or RDP to those machines right away without having to create some port forwards or some complex network configuration. I'm talking to developers who don't want to have to just have a quick wizard to create their servers and access it. So for this reason, we started using shared network instead of, of isolated networks. And we, we, uh, we created our, our implementation based on that. So a shared network, for those who are not familiar with it, with this, is, a, is basically a network 
that is routed by a, a, a router external to CloudStack. So it's not routed by the VR themselves, it's another router. Um, so another, another issue we, we had when, when first implementing um, uh, CloudStack on VMware was the, the, the initial configuration for the VMware interfaces, network interfaces. Uh, it was not straightforward to configure. We're used to having, so our environment is typically uh, has a VLAN for management, has a VLAN for this, a VLAN for guests, and a bunch of different VLAN configuration. So when we initiated install CloudStack, we had to uh, do some tweakings because CloudStack was expecting the management VLAN to be the same one as the CloudStack management and such kind of thing. So we were somewhat able to, to figure it out. And we ended up with our first environment, which was a two-host environment, I mean, have the specs there, uh, sand storage. And in, in our case, we decided to, to just cannibalize our production standby site instead of, 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 of spawning new resources or using some old, old crappy servers. So um, one of the things we decided also in terms of implementation was that because we were dealing with many development teams that can be between like three or 10 people in each team, and I have like probably 10 of those at different teams, we decided to create one account per development team, uh, and also integrate their authentication with the internal Active Directory. Uh, the reason behind that was, was that we wanted each team to work uh, together and manage their own resources. Uh, we didn't need like, each people to have an account. They, they, they could share those resources together and also manage them, uh, which was a, a, a big difference between, uh, versus what we had before, where each team had a bunch of virtual machines that they somewhat created over time by creating a request, but they didn't have really a big picture of this. So it was, it was really complex over time to, to know which one is the owner of that virtual machine that I have in my infrastructure. I didn't know if it was this guy, this guy, because eventually people leave, people change team, a project changes, so it, the, whole, the whole organization can change. Um, so the first observations we, um, after, uh, after setting up our first environment for, for CloudStack Dev, we tried to get the dev teams on board. So the first thing was to, to let them know, hey, we have some, an infrastructure as a service platform in-house, and you guys can use it. It's just you log in, you create machines, and there you go. That was the, the, whole, uh, the whole purpose. So we had to present to, the, to those teams the, different, uh, the difference between the GUI, the API, such kind of tool, give them, create some, some, some simple uh, getting started uh, documentation page on this. And one thing we, um, we start uh, discussing with them was what we call a cloud janitor. Um, so at first, as I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, we were somewhat afraid that, that the dev guys would just create, keep creating machines like crazy and that we would run out of all, all of our resources quickly. So one of the, the, the thing we, we mentioned to them that we weren't sure about was, do we need some kind of process that, that cleans up the old machines, or make sure that if you guys are not using machines, or if your machines are too old, we just clean them up or we stop them automatically. So that, that, what, that, that is what we, we were calling a cloud janitor. Um, what happened, basically, is that we discussed this, but in the end, we said, let's go forward without it and see what happens. Let's make an experiment. So, um, so that, that's what we did. <laughs> And in the end, after a couple of months, we never talked again about this because we realized that it was not required. So as soon as we, we deployed CloudStack internally for, for development teams, we saw a continuous increase in terms of, uh, of usage over time. We saw developers with huge workstation with like huge quantities of RAM starting to use CloudStack instead of having their own, uh, uh, using VMware or VirtualBox locally to uh, to have a bunch of virtual machines to run their, their development or QA environment. So, and we also have an, automate, an automation team internally that uh, started using uh, the salt stack, which is a, a remote, remote execution framework that can do more than that, to, to basically build complete environments by using the cloud stack API. So uh, what it means is that you take, an, you take a bunch of servers, Windows, Linux together, you configure the installation automatically of all the applications, and you connect them all together. All this, and this requires, required an infrastructure as a service. But that was a big change toward what we were doing before, if you remember the workflow that, that, I, that, I, that I showed her on, on, the, on the previous slide, uh, which was taking days. Now they were able, through a simple script, to create a whole environment 
And then they were able to give the, these, these kind of scripts to each development team so they can do the same thing and reuse these, uh, the, 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 these automation scripts. So uh, as I mentioned earlier about, uh, uh, about Cloud Janitor, uh, the, one of the biggest concerns we had was resource management. We were afraid that people, because it was like a, a, an, a, a, an open buffet, that they, they would eat all the resources pretty quickly and that we would run into uh, the, 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 the limits uh, pretty fast. So what we realized was that giving, giving, giving dev developers access to a, to a self-service platform where they, they, can, they can manage their own, um, uh, their own resource, create them, delete them, and, 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 and manage this by, by themselves, it kind of did, 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 did that cloud janitor by itself. Because we realized that people were somewhat uh, diligent about what, 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 what resource they use, and they were just keeping what they really needed. And as a team, they, they, were, they were asking those questions. And in terms of, of processes, what we, uh, what we did uh, is that since each dev team has a team lead, uh, if we had some questions about the resource usage for a dev team, we had one guy that was well identified to ask those questions. But giving them visibility on their resources was, the, was a, big, a, a big advantage for them and for us. Um, so, in terms of infrastructure, as I mentioned, we have two data centers. We are on th the production right now is at Toronto, and our, um, our Montreal data center uh, has, uh, was standby production. Uh, okay, just to mention, we use some nimble storage. We have net scalers. We have one V center at each data center. The logic behind that is that each data center needs to be pretty much independent from each other, even though they, they're supposed to mirror each other. So, because we had a, 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 a we were uh, we had a lot of overcapacity, uh, we decided to to just start cannibalizing those uh, those data centers in order to to reuse some of those resources for CloudStack. So one of the things we realized by using CloudStack in an existing environment, CloudStack was not for us to replace necessarily what we had already. We have production running on this. We don't want to introduce instability right away. We want to slowly integrate this. So um, what we realized is that you we need to either give uh, uh, an, e, uh, an ESX host to our traditional production or to CloudStack, because once you give it to CloudStack, it manages it completely. You cannot like, share uh, your, your host between the traditional one and, 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 the, and the new CloudStack cluster. So basically, we, we took an, an eight machine cluster and split it into a six and a two machine in production in order to, have to start having some, 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 uh, a CloudStack platform in production. And in, in, for development, we started with two servers and eventually we added a third one. Um, so the logic behind having two cloud stack in our environments, one for dev, one for prod, is that, it, is that for us, each data center should be independent. If, if the other side goes down, the other one should notice. So, um, and in the end, we didn't re realize that cloud stack was not too heavy in terms of resource to run, uh, so, so it, it was easier for that, plus for security purposes, it was much easier to, to physically separate them in terms of, of network and access. So uh, in order to, to run your cloud stack, some people like to, to run the cloud stack management servers or database on, 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 on separate servers or bare metal. For us, it was, it, it was easy. Since we had a, a, a regular cluster with our production stuff, we could just instantly use a, a couple of virtual machines on it in order to have the cloud stack um, uh, management servers and DBs. And then the other cluster would, would run the cloud, cloud stack load. So we didn't need, we, we didn't need extra hardware for that. Um, in terms of networking, uh, because we, were, we wanted to use shared networks, uh, the idea was to um, give one network per account. So, and make all those networks accessible everywhere through, uh, through our router here. And to have a, a subdomain for each, um, each network. So for example, we, we, we made the choice of using the, the, the top level domain dot cloud for all our cloud stack infrastructure, either prod or, 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 um, or, uh, or dev. And each network would be a, a subdomain of that with the name of the account. So let's say I have a, a I don't I will know when our, our product is called PTS, so PTS.cloud was the subdomain for that. So every time you deploy a machine in, in, that, in that network, the, it was the machine name.pts.cloud. It was the way to reach the machine directly. So that, that was our, the way we integrated with DNS. And um, yeah. So 
after six months, that uh, brings us uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, we saw a big, a big migration of our, our, old, our old development environments toward CloudStack because of people really saw the value of, 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 of having this environment. And um, because of resource usage, we, need, we needed to add a third host for this. Uh, we run into a couple of issues for or, around over-provisioning, whether it's CPU, memory, and storage, uh, primarily because sometimes this, some of the settings were not working as we were expecting. Uh, we had some issues with the virtual routers. Actually, we had a bunch of issues with the virtual routers. Uh, DNS DH, uh, and DHCP were not stable. I mean, we're talking about people who deploy like 10 machines simultaneously. So uh, the way it looks like we, we found some bugs in, in, the, in the virtual router and had to find some workarounds. For example, on the DNS side, uh, if you're familiar with how the virtual router works, they use a, a service called DNS masquerading, which is a very, very lightweight DNS and, and DHCP server. And for DNS, every time we were adding a host, it was restarting the service. So during that time, the DNS was not working. And because TTLs are, are zero, it just keeps going to the DNS all the time. So we actually did a workaround for that by installing our own uh, DNS server next to CloudStack in order to manage um, uh, the DNS ourselves. So we have basically have a, a script that, 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 that looks at the CloudStack events. Every time there's a new machine, it updates the DNS with it. And that way we gain much stability because we use a, a more uh, robust DNS server. Um, so we did the upgrade to 4.2.1 recently. Uh, sometimes it's scary to do updates with CloudStack because uh, there's no rollback procedures on, on some of the steps. So you have to be very careful uh, and understand what you're doing. So that's uh, part of our experience. Um, and our, so, so CloudStack also enabled us to, uh, from, from a development perspective, to, to, to start doing some continuous delivery process. So I mean, I'm not a developer, so I cannot really elaborate a lot on this. But basically, it's, it's the fact that you, you're, as soon as, as you commit your code, your code is constantly being built, tested, and, and, and using the same mechanism that we, we use to, to, to deploy the production. Well, globally, it's something pretty much similar to that. Um, and also, uh, we, um, we started doing our migration of our production environments to CloudStack. So for us, it's a way to, to really automate our deployments. If the deployments include bringing new machine in more in a cloud way than a traditional way where you do everything manually, if you have this kind of platform, you can just spawn machines whenever you create a new deployment, just uh, uh, reroute your load balancer to those new machines, and there you go, you're in prod. So, uh, so the automation script that we have enabled us to, um, to do such a thing. So we just started to, to, to roll out um, uh, cloud stack in production for some specific products, so some of our applications, and uh, it, like a, we, we did we, we did that for one of the new product we were developing, and we're in the in the pro process of doing it for another one. Uh, so 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 our our so the way we, we see the transition for us is that we think our um, our production environment will just transition from a traditional VMware production cluster to a, a cloud stack VMware cluster. So we would just maybe move host one at a time from one cluster to another in order to, uh, as, uh, as, as it follows the shift of resources from one to another. Uh, another thing we were, we were um, uh, really looking forward was to uh, start leveraging, um, uh, like benefit from the fact that CloudStack makes an, an abstraction of the hypervisor for the users and for all the automation scripts aside to start looking as, as, uh, as, at, at other hypervisor for, uh, for, uh, as a free alternative to VMware. I mean, VMware is great, it's super stable, it has great features, but there's a cost tied to that. So depending on the types of load you want to run, sometimes for, for, for load that, that does not require as much, uh, as much of this stability or, can, or, or are built to sustain failure or, or can, can deal with this, um, uh, it was interesting for us to, to start having, like, say, KVM as a free alter, as a free hypervisor, and VMware for more like legacy stuff, uh, existing product. Uh, so that's why, in the end, we say that CloudStack is not an all-or-nothing solution. You can, we actually are a good example of people who decided to use it for some some stuff, 
and keep using our platform for, for our existing uh, applications, not to put them necessarily at risk by changing the whole way that they're built, but for, for transition them slowly, but depending on the way you wanna, you wanna do that. So if you have questions, uh, we're open for questions, both uh, Francois and myself, Francois. <laughs> Um, we're still not done. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation, um, and I hope you uh, you see that it's uh, it's not fluff. Um, it's possible to really change things with with CloudStack in your enterprise or you know in your company. Um, and if uh, you guys have like five minutes, um, if possible. We would like to get your like. Uh, you would like to understand how you are using cloud, or what you think like uh, would be the cloud usage. Um, it's just a small survey, tw ten questions, five minutes. Uh, you can you can go to that URL, um, and we will give back all those results to you. Uh, we will not keep that for ourselves. We will contribute. We will contribute back those results. And my other announcement is that we host a party tonight. Uh, I know there was one yesterday. Um, but tonight, uh, with, with Solidfire and, and us CloudUps, uh, we would like to invite you to a beer, beer t tasting. Uh, so it's uh, the, front, uh, the front porch. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but uh, you have the, the register link. Uh, it's on Evenbrite, and it's free. It's free, okay? So we're done. So if you have questions. So, so our, our upgrade to 4 to 1 went well, but in the process of upgrading it, we, we saw that there were some, some parts that had no point of return. So, uh, but so, so our strategy right now will be to build a, a, a test environment or some kind of little POC environment in order to test those upgrades to, to be more familiar with them before upgrading our dev environment, which yes, it's a dev environment, but it impacts so many people when it goes down that you have to be careful. So, but in, in, in probably in, in after uh, uh, this POC environment, so in a couple of weeks, we'll probably upgrade to 4.3. We already upgraded to 4.3, but I, I'm not very sure you're really defined by that, because I think it's more stable than 4.2.1. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> No, you have to manually create each user inside the account to map the user to an, an account. So, the, so the, the, there's no relation to groups in AD. It's really to a uh, one-to-one uh, -one user creation. And you have to explicitly create each user on CloudStack to grant them access to that account. That, that, that's one thing I wanted to uh, you know, comment on is that an account in CloudStack is more of a group. Yeah. So it's not like you know, the entire team is sharing the same credentials, right? You sti they still have their own <coughs> credential users within an account. But they share the same <coughs> resources. And they can delete the stuff of, their, of, of their, their coworker in the same team. So they have to be careful, but they should be working together anyway. So in our case, they're all sitting next to each other, so it's not a big issue. Yeah, since, uh, since, since for two, you can limit the, the resource per account, pretty much like this. We actually don't, because we, we want to like, educate them at the same time. And so far, it's been a pretty good experience. Every time we, at the beginning, we, we were trying to put uh, uh, quotas, especially when, when 4.2 came out. It had quotas by default. We didn't realize that. And um, we just quickly remove all this. And whenever the, we, we see that we have some problems in terms of resource, we just look at who's using the most, and we ask questions. And generally, people just clean stuff by themselves. Or if we ask them, they go, oh, yeah, we can delete this, no problem. And they do it themselves. So it's just less work for us. And we focus on just improving the platform instead of doing all this repetitive work and tasks. Yes? But were you guys ever asked to do a return on investment analysis? Or you know, was there a, a case study done on how much savings you got by implementing this approach? Um, not, not specifically, but I know that our management uh, 
really see the value in this. I mean, they're, they're, they were very happy with the end result and the transformation that happened at the IT level in terms of what it brings and in terms of a capability for automation and, uh, and all those things. So, so they, they directly see the value, but unfortunately I cannot put a price tag to this or a... One more? Well, thanks a lot, guys. I think it was a great talk and a great uh, case study of CloudStack with VMware, with Netscaler, with Cisco UCS. DR in Amazon, so a great case study. I would love to uh, write something about it that we can uh, you know, put on the CloudStack website. Thanks, guys.